Hello and welcome to Fully Charged, coming to you from the centre of London, this beautiful historic city, the wonderful river, the wonderful vistas. It has a couple of problems, we all know that. Uh, you know, obviously social and economic issues are, are at the fore at the moment, but primarily one of the things that's been in the news a great deal recently is air quality in London. It's pretty bad, as we know. On a day like today, it's really not too bad because it's a nice breezy day, it's a beautiful sunny day, but there are somewhere around a million diesel cars, trucks, buses, vans that are driving around London and the particulate counts as we know and we'll cover in other episodes as well get to levels that are completely illegal. Uh, London passed its, uh, its yearly particulate emissions level in nine days last year. The first nine days of the year it, it, it had produced what it's meant to produce over a year. So it's a really big issue. So there's loads of solutions to that. The obvious ones are don't drive your car, walk, catch the bus, ride a bike, use public transport. One of the solutions, which I think is really valid and really important because using a car is occasionally very, very helpful. If you're doing shopping, if you're moving your kids, if you're taking people around, really useful to have access to a car. Do you really need to own one if you live in London? And that is what we're looking at today. Zipcar is one of the biggest car sharing projects in the city. A year ago, they introduced electric cars for the first time. E-Golfs, really nice electric car. There is now three or 400 of these in the city. They've become very popular. Up to 10 million people are working in the city of London during the day. I mean, it's a very, very big city. Europe's only mega city. So, you know, it's got a big challenge and it's a big thing to change. So what about charging electric cars in London? What about not owning electric cars, but using them? That's what we're looking at today. So Jonathan, Zipcar, I've heard about for years. So yes. when, uh, just quickly remind me how long it's been going. It's quite a long time now. It is. So we, we first started in the UK in 2004. Right. We were a startup called Streetcar that That's right. became yeah. Zipcar in 2009. So, so in the UK, we've been Zipcar since 2009, but right. we had a, a bit of a history before that. Right. And then last year, you, was that really when you introduced the first lot of electric cars? Was that a year ago? Yes. So, I mean, I think we've always wanted to have electric vehicles in our fleet, and it was just how soon would it make sense to do so? And last year, so we introduced the 325 e-golfs into the fleet and, and so, so far they've, they've gone down fantastically well with our member base. Right. We see uh, a higher number of trips per car in the e-golf than we do uh, in the petrol vehicles. Wow. So we see members proactively uh, going for these vehicles rather than a petrol one. So, right. so without a shadow of a doubt, uh, you know, members are loving driving electric vehicles. So if you can make it simple enough, if you can price it right, right. then we have no doubt the demand is there. Right. Because that was one of the things I was going to ask is whether whether the, the drivers have, are expected to charge the cars, but they're generally driving them around in central London anyway, so they're not going to they're not going to run out. So the eagles sit within our Flex fleet, and, and Flex is our fully free floating car sharing scheme. So it's a by the minutes you can find a car and pick it up from anywhere and drop it off anywhere within a given zone. So right. so that's what the eagle sits within. So. Uh, to make that work with uh, with electric vehicles, we take care of all of the charging. Right. So, um, literally, when a vehicle goes underneath a 25% charge level, it disappears out of the app. Members can no longer book it anymore, right. uh, and that triggers an action for us to take it to a rapid charging station, rapid charge it, and redistribute it back out. So, in the short term, we've decided to very much take the pain of charging away from members. So they don't have to right. worry about it. They can just enjoy electric driving. In the medium to long term, absolutely, as infrastructure starts to improve, then, then absolutely we want members to charge the vehicle in the same way they would a petrol vehicle. Right, but for the right. short term, we're taking that pain away. Right. You know, we, we say that these cars live in London, and right. therefore for London city driving, uh, you know, if you want to take a car a bit further, we've got lots of other vehicles in the Zipcar fleet. We've got yeah. 3,000 vehicles now in the Zipcar fleet in London. But for the time being, we want to try and keep it simple. Right. And then in terms of the future, are you intending to expand the electric element of what, you're, of what you offer. Absolutely. So, so when we launched these in July of last year, uh, you know, we came out with a statement that said we wanted to be fully electric by 2025. So oh, right. okay. you know, that, that was right. us putting a marker in the sand saying, uh, you know, this is where we want to get to. And we really hope that car manufacturers, infrastructure providers will rally around that, that vision. So 325 so far, uh, you know, not insignificant first step, yeah. but it is only that. It's a first yeah. step towards yeah. something much, much larger we want to achieve. A wish for me is that the fact that the more people share cars and, and use systems like this, the, the dream would be that the less cars there are on the road, because these, these get used, you know, if, some, if an individual owned this car, it would be used at a fraction of the time it is at the moment. And particularly with electric cars, they last a long time, you know that, they need less maintenance, so they're kind of ideal for the role. Yep. So 
I mean, is that is that a kind of long term aim? I mean, I'm assuming that is a long term aim of something like Zipcar is that yeah. if there's, and there's it, then it'd be easier to park it. All those things become easier. I, I think yeah, we we live in you know, London is an amazing city, but the reality is it's got some really really large problems. So there's rapid urbanisation, lots of people moving into London, and it just means that the way that we've always consumed the car in the city is just going to become increasingly yeah. difficult. So yeah. mixture of congestion and poor air quality are problems that modern day cities need to solve. Our view is very much that, that actually car sharing can help be a part of that solution. So it can allow people to continue to consume the car and do everything they would always have done, but just in a much, much more efficient way. Yeah. And, and obviously having electric cars achieving that really gives you uh, another tick in that box. So you know, creating cars taken off the road through car sharing, all achieved with the greenest possible cars or electric vehicles. Yeah. That's what we're trying to achieve. I mean, actually, where we are is a very good example of, uh, of the difference between a city like London and, say, Los Angeles or you know an Australian city you know wherever that they're in modern cities that were built on grids with wider roads this is a medieval yeah. you know, medieval dockside I and mean, we're cobbled streets it's narrow there's nowhere to park it's you know it's a really it's a really big challenge to put cars in a city like this absolutely I think you know, London's infrastructure is so old and that as uh, people pour into it it's just going to have increasingly uh, it's going to be increasingly painful to own that vehicle you know yeah. there's there's nothing, you know, the car used to be a status symbol, but, but for us, you know, there's nothing particularly powerful about owning a car that sits outside your house for, for the vast, vast majority yeah. of the time, is difficult to park. Um, you know, so actually we think if we can just prevent, uh, present a better way to use the car in yeah. the city, then you know, that's why we're starting to see the popularity that we are. And I think that's the, the other thing I would imagine that we might be, there might be a resistance to it, is, oh, I might not be able to get one when I want one, but that, you know, when I look at your app and see how, just in this area around here, how many of these cars are around, there's a yeah. lot. You know, you wouldn't have to walk far to find another one. It's, it, you know. no. uh, so our aim has always to, to be to get a, a car within 10 minutes walk of every Londoner. And, right. uh, and I say the vast majority of parts of London now have, have easily that. So right. you know, we want to make this simple and convenient um, as an alternative to private car ownership. So most people will only walk two to five minutes to their nearest car. Uh, and if we can make it that simple and price it right, yeah. then that really is a viable alternative. Yeah. I, I think the pressure we sometimes have is, is clearly there is a, a large focus in London, rightly so, on walking and cycling. And, yeah. and that clearly has to be a large focus for the city. But in doing that, we're very much saying, don't forget the car. For, for the vast majority of people, the car is going to continue to be an important mode of yeah. transport. So let's figure out what's the right way that we want people to consume the car. We think car sharing is just that. But local authorities will, will understand that and come to that point of view at, at differing rates, and that's what we yeah. see. I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm hoping is that, you know, a borough that uh, so at the moment doesn't let you leave the car in their borough sees in other boroughs the popularity of the cars, the fact that they're used a lot, the fact that the local people really like them. You know, it's those sort of things. Because I think they're assuming they're just going to get loads of complaints of, like, they've left a zip car on my street, I can't park anywhere. Yeah. I mean, Because that is a real key thing for me is... I drive this car now and I drive to where I want to go and I can leave that car there as long as it's parked legally Absolutely. and I can park it in residence bays, I can park it in uh, where you pay, I mean any parking place. Most boroughs give us access to any legal parking bays, right. so residence bays, pay and display bays, it varies slightly borough by borough as right. to what they're willing to give us access to but, but certainly almost all give us access to, to the vast majority of their parking right. stock. So, um, so in theory I could drive it and park it outside my house and get my shopping out the back and take it and forget the car. I don't have to worry about it. It's exactly Once that. I've un so, un uh, uh, stopped renting it. Yeah. So, so I think you know, that, that's the key benefit of, of a service like this. You know, it's incredibly uh, flexible access to a vehicle that, that can allow you to do things that actually if you owned your own car, you wouldn't be able to do. Right. And that, that's what can tip the balance in favour of car sharing versus car owning, right. which you know, that's why we launched uh, the Zipcar Flex service uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, and you know, that, you know, we've certainly seen, we have just over a quarter of a million members in London now. So, wow. so since we launched it, wow. we've seen a real take up in popularity, yeah. which, is, which is great. That is amazing, yeah. I mean, we've had these in the fleet now, uh, you know, coming up to a year. And in that first year, we had 20,000 unique uh, Zipcar members using uh, these e electric vehicles, you know, often trying an electric vehicle for the very first yeah. time. That kind of exposure for electric vehicles really in important. the city yeah. is, is really starting to normalise it and become something that, that isn't a niche, but it's starting to break into the mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. So certainly one of the real big news topic at the moment in, for the last couple of years in London has been air quality, yeah. as in it stinks in London. And, and I really notice it coming into London. I can yeah. tell from breathing it. it just, and I mean, do you think that the car sharing, well, I'm sure, you know, if people just use electric car sharing cars, that would improve enormously. Yes. But do you, do you see that as part of, the, of a bigger solution? 
Yes, I mean, there's, there's two things that car sharing does. It's, uh, you know, the first one is it creates behavioral change. So if you own a car, then you see it as this sunk cost. You know, you've got a car sitting right. outside your house. Kind you, of first option for exactly. going to the You shops. might as well use it, yeah. you know, whether it's the most appropriate form or not. So, so I think what we see in data is that when someone joins a car sharing club like Zepcar, they typically drive less after joining. They make much more rational decisions around how they uh, do any particular trip. So, so we see they drive less, they walk, cycle, and take public transport more. So I think the, the key benefit of car sharing, actually almost regardless of what vehicles we use, is that behavioral right. change. But of course, it makes sense for us to try and achieve that with the cleanest possible vehicle. So, so adding electric vehicles and trying to achieve that with electric vehicles in there as well almost yeah. gives you a double whammy. It's, it's your double bubble, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the drivers don't have to plug the car in, but then you do. And at the moment, well, you've got 325 electrics, yep. so, which is, I would assume you're managing that at the moment. Yep. But, but if you do up, up that number to thousands of electric cars, then there's quite a challenge in terms of keeping them charged. Yes, I, I think it's fair to say that the way we're delivering at the moment, uh, first of all, we're delivering it in partnership with Volkswagen. So they right. are helping us uh, to normalize some of the costs involved with, with electric car sharing, which are, are still more expensive than were we to operate a fleet of, of petrol vehicles. And a lot of that cost is that we are having to shuttle the vehicles to a rapid charging station right. and do that. Obviously, where we want to get to, and if we're to electrify our, our whole fleet and have a fleet electric fleet of 3,000 vehicles plus, is, is for there to be enough infrastructure out there that the regular the consumer just during their trip or at the end of their trip there is charge the vehicle and there's somewhere for them to plug yeah. it in. And the thing that's really grabbed me is the fact that it doesn't have to be in its own special parking bay with its own special markings or anything. You just leave this car anywhere that you can that it's legal to park. Obviously not on a corner on a double yellow line, that'd be bad. In a legal parking zone and if you if you want to get a car you can find it on the app so I'm just going to now open the app and I, because I'm already here you know I can I'm right next to the car so I, I press the little uh, icon above the car and it's a, and I can see it's a Volkswagen e-Golf it has 69% uh, in the battery which is a range of approximately 91 miles so I just touch that I then get the screen which tells me exactly where it is 10 Bermondsey Wall East on street and it's in the zip zone which is the, there's different zones in the in london where you can and can't park the car you can drive it anywhere doesn't matter where you drive it but you can't park it in certain zones because the councils are a bit sniffy about it but most of london you can uh, and so there's the, the so i then confirm the reservation and that's just now having a little chat to confirm the reservation congratulations we'll hold your car so there it is i can see it on the map oh my god and then I go unlock. Oh my God, I haven't done this before. This is a genuine <laughs> first go. I've not had any help. This is the first time I've done this. I've pressed unlock. It's unlocked. I've got in, amazing. Oh, keys. Ah oh, no, the keys, keys are in the glove box. Hang on, seatbelt first, safety first. There's the key. Check this in a special little debris. That's the key. Put the key in the ignition, which is down there, and I can find it really easily. And it's on. So the first thing I want to say about Zipcar is, if you live in London and you want to have a go driving an electric car, that's a really good reason for, for joining because, for one thing, the e-Golf is just a brilliant electric car. There's no question about that. It's really nice to drive, really easy to drive. And if you've not driven an electric car before and you want to see what it feels like, you can drive a, 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 an e-Golf for a few hours. You don't have to charge it. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about taking it back to where you got it. That is such a good system. As long as you park it within one of the, the boroughs, and it, it shows you on the app, you don't have to be clever. Even I can understand it. And if I can understand an app, anyone can understand an app. You'll be able to park it in far more places than you can park a privately owned car. That makes it a lot easier. It just makes sense. If you live in a big city like London, what's the point of owning a car? I mean, I think that's the kind of key thing that I really wanted to, to find out about how easy that it was to use this. You know, and I think it's, it's going to take a while for a lot of people to sort of adjust or even think about, well, I don't, I'm not going to own a car anymore, I'm only going to use Zipcar. It's quite a big change 
to people of my generation because we, we're used to owning cars and having them there all the time sitting around doing nothing which is what happens 90% of the time but with this you don't have to worry about it you don't have to ha make sure it's insured you don't have to get MOT'd or serviced you don't even have to charge it you don't have to do anything you just drive it when you want it and you leave it when you don't want it and it's not it's not your responsibility it's not a problem you don't have to renew your parking agreements with the council or any of that stuff there are so many advantages to using a car like this so as you can see this truck that's running beside me it's not the driver's fault it's not even the fault of the company that owns it but i mean you know these are all diesel vehicles all these vehicles around here and they are pumping out really un toxic micro particulates that when you breathe them in they go into your lungs and they stay there this is the problem that science has revealed in the last few years and all that rubbish about clean diesel is just such a brutal cruel lie and i'm really you know really pleased to see that the gla and uh, the mayor of london sadiq khan are actually doing something genuinely a proper set of decisions to actually change things to actually deliver really a, a huge amount of public accessible charging to encourage the uptake of electric taxis to in to uh, start using electric buses to basically set an example and they're charging more in the zero emission zone for vehicles like this to enter which is encouraging we hope companies that do deliver in london and there's a lot of them to start actually using electric vehicles more and more and i think that's really going to happen we're seeing more and more particularly electric delivery vans because as you can see there's a lot of them on the roads in london so now i'm going to park the car legally in a residence only parking bay which if you were in a private car and you didn't live around here and you didn't have the permit you'd, you'd get fined it's amazing but you can park this there as long as you park it legally, which I'm trying to do without curbing the or running into anything. I think I've done it. Oh, I think I've done it rather well. Uh, there we go. Oh, that is so cool. So I've put the key back in its little little socket, and this is what this is so cool. So I've got the app open. I can see where the car is parked. I know where it is, and it's unlocked at the moment. And I, pr I press the lock bit on the app. Oh my God, I did it really quick. I thought it was going to take a moment. And then to stop paying for the rental, I then press end trip, which is really good. And it says lock and end trip. Have you, and it tell, asks you, have you put the keys back? Uh, have you parked it properly and all that stuff? And is it within the zip zone? Yes, yes, and yes. Lock and end trip. There we go. And so there we go. Oh, I love that. So that is so, it's so easy. If I can do it, this is, this is always my key thing. If I can operate an app that easily, then uh, anyone can, literally anyone can do it. And that's how easy it is to use this car. So I think it's brilliant. I think Zipcar have done an amazing thing. I'm really looking forward to them introducing a load more electric cars. I do think it's a really good sign that the, the Greater London Authority, the, the Mayor, uh, Sadiq Khan, have made this commitment to really pushing the electrification of, of transport in London. I think it's a really important thing. And they've done it alongside the, the, the encouragement and the, the, the facilitating people walking cycling using public transport easier all those things as well as sharing cars it could really transform this city i think it's brilliant so anyway that's all we've got time for i've really enjoyed doing it because the vw golf the e-golf is brilliant it's a lovely car to drive uh please do subscribe to fully charged have a look at the old patreon link if you haven't looked already you're probably bored sick of looking at the patreon link but it really really helps us um you know do do have a go have a go with a zip car if you live in a big city and, they, and there's zip cars around. And, that, and as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.